The first thing to look at in the Steelers versus Jets Week 2 NFL game this weekend is going to be how the Jets' secondary matches up against the Steelers' high-powered wide receivers. Against Buffalo in Week 1, the Jets played a lot of man coverage but mixed in zone as well, and that led to general confusion along Buffalo's offensive front, along with several turnovers from Bills, wide, Bills quarterback Ryan Fitzpatrick. Expect the Steelers to attack that, certainly when they're in man. Even with a cornerback that's as good as Darrell Rivas, they will look to get their shots down the field considering the speed and ability of Wallace and Brown. It's going to be a matchup to see, certainly, Rivas versus Wallace or Brown. The question is going to be which one he's going to cover. The answer is probably going to be both. At certain points of the game, depending on the situation, you're going to see him switch over to either one of them. And don't forget Heath Miller, who's all of a sudden become a rejuvenated target within uh, Todd Haley's new Pittsburgh Steelers offense. He had seven targets last week, including three in the red zone, and scored a touchdown. Probably would have had a second one, if not for an errant Ben Roethlisberger pass. Either way, the secondary, versus, the secondary of the Jets versus the Steelers is going to be a primary matchup and a big factor in the outcome of this game. The second big thing to look for in the Steelers' Week 2 matchup against the New York Jets is going to be limiting the big playability of rookie wide receiver Stephen Hill. As they saw against Demarius Thomas in Week 1, big receivers running after the catch can be problematic for the Steelers' defense and look for Hill to do a lot of the same type of stuff. He scored a touchdown off a short reception, beating the defense to the pylon in the second half, and he caught a ball pretty high up in the air, spinning off the defender and scoring in the first half. He wreaks havoc wherever he goes all over the field, and that's somebody that the Steelers are going to need to account for, and they're going to have to, to have him produce less than the 17.6 yards per catch he had against Buffalo in Week 1. The return of Ryan Clark for the Steelers is definitely going to be important in that area. It helps the Steelers provide a bit more cover two, putting uh, two safeties over the top, plus it will allow Troy Polamalu to flow around more toward the line of scrimmage a bit more often than they were able to against Denver. Limiting big plays is a staple of Dick LeBeau's defense, and you're going to have to see it against the Jets because they're a big play waiting to happen. Another thing to look for on Sunday is going to be the Steelers' ability to stop the Jets' running game in an effort to limit their play-action passing opportunity. The Steelers didn't do particularly well on the ground against Denver, but the Jets didn't really run the ball that well against Buffalo either. These are two teams that are both known for running the ball and stopping the run, so the fire versus ice situation that they'll have will be decided on the field. The key to the Jets' passing game last week was certainly based off their play-action ability. Now, they didn't run the ball very well, but they set up play-action very well. They motion their tight ends and their fullbacks frequently, and they often look for them in the passing game. The Steelers saw a lot of this against Denver, and what Denver did primarily was motion wide receiver Brandon Stokely down uh, from split out wide to counteract any blitz opportunity for Troy Polamalu. Troy Polamalu would then drop back deeper into the secondary, anticipating more of a pass, and the Broncos were able to run the ball. The Steelers are going to have to get pressure up front, which, whether it's a three- or a four-man front, in order to, to be successful in doing this. Stopping the run, you can expect the linebackers to run blitz frequently, getting in the gaps, making sure that they're able to plug up anything that's in there. They can't allow Sanchez out on the move, which is something he looked pretty good in doing um, on Sunday, except for one interception that he threw. And if they're able to limit his movement and keep the, the fullbacks and tight ends occupied, not releasing off the line, you can expect the Steelers to have a pretty successful day against the ground. Another key to this game is going to be for the Steelers to establish the run, and in doing that, they're going to be using Jonathan Dwyer primarily. Isaac Redman had 11 carries last week for 20 yards and looked injured for most of it. He's been injured for the most of the preseason as well, so it wouldn't be a surprise to see Jonathan Dwyer get even two-thirds of the carries in this game. Dwyer looked very good, on the other hand. He had nine carries for 43 yards, including a big one that was called back on a holding penalty. He probably would have netted 10 yards anyway. The Steelers are going to need to establish the run if they're going to set up a play-action pass, very much like what the Jets are going to want to do. And the Steelers have weapons down the field to use in doing that. In the past, when the Steelers have been able to play action pass, they've shredded their opposition. Looking ahead into this game, though, it's going to come down to their ability up front to win the line of scrimmage, to open holes, and to get Dwyer running very well, which he certainly can do as an individual. With the injuries of Ramon Foster and Marcus Gilbert, that might have been limited a little bit in their first week's game against Denver, but both Gilbert and Foster are expected to play, and if the Steelers at full strength, they should be able to run the ball effectively. And finally, the last thing to look for in the Steelers' Week 2 game against the New York Jets is going to be their ability to get the Jets off the field on third down. The problem that they had with the Denver Broncos in Week 1 was the fact they had so few third downs to deal with. Broncos only had nine third down opportunities, converting five of them. 
big part of the reason why the Broncos were successful last week was due to the fact that the Steelers could not stop them on second down. Getting two third down and getting the Jets off the field, bringing in their punting unit, is going to be a critical component of this game. They have an advantage in terms of third and long situations because the Jets are not going to be able to block as well on the edge for guys like Lamar Woodley or stunting Brett Kiesel and Ziggy Hood. Giving the Steelers the ability to fill gaps, get into the quarterback's face, and eventually put him on the ground is going to be a major factor in this game. The pass rush was almost non-existent in the second half against Denver, largely because Manning was throwing the ball within two seconds after he received it. It didn't give him much of an opportunity to really put any pressure on the quarterback. To get to a third down situation, they're going to have to succeed on first and second down. Those two things obviously are important as well, but they need to finish the job on third down. Getting interceptions, getting sacks, they're going to need to make these splash plays if they want to contend in this game. That's it for now. Um, I'm Neil Kulong with Behind the Steel Curtain. Remember to subscribe to SB Nation's YouTube channel and like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter. Thank you.